But we're trying to recover and restore for a new generation of lawyers, but also businessmen and citizens. The furnishings of mind of those remarkable men who framed this American regime and brought forth the Constitution, those framers understood a world of moral judgment and principles before they made the Constitution. They drew upon those understandings in framing the Constitution. The Constitution was not the source of their understanding. And part of our teaching here has been that one can't apply the Constitution to the, to the cases that arise in our law. One can't make those practical judgments without going back to those original principles. Well, what I particularly like about the James Wilson Institute and the work of Professor Arcus is that there is so much focused on the underlying philosophical principles, recognizing the moral questions that are at stake in so much of what lawyers and judges do, and also famously recognizing the way in which moral and philosophical principles are unavoidably embedded in everything that judges and lawyers are doing, that the very act of judging involves a reliance on a whole set of natural laws, law ideas that are often implicit, but uh, nonetheless absolutely necessary to the kind of work that they're doing. James Wilson Fellows come from a variety of different backgrounds. They come from some of our leading law schools, uh, but what unite them all is an interest in testing in the most demanding ways the justification for why we have certain binding commitments in our law. You don't often hear about natural law in law school. Maybe, maybe occasionally it'll be brought up, uh, but here we're really focusing on the way that the founders thought about the law and the, the way that they approach it. We're e evaluating whether and to what extent it's helpful um, in the modern day. This is the start of a process, uh, more than just a self-contained endeavor. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I think what James Wilson Institute Fellowship does is get people thinking about the right ideas and the right processes as well as connecting people with others who can help them work through that and, and understand how to implement some of these ideas that they're working through. Um, Professor Arcus has really taught me um, to not just look at the originalist understanding, right, but to go back to the principles behind the original understanding of the Constitution. That that's really grounded in something very different, very fundamental. And that's something that at least in my law school experience was missing. We didn't talk about principles. We just said, you know, what is this word in the Constitution? What did the Federalists say about it? But we never went the extra step to say, why did the Federalists say that? Was that just a novel, original idea of Hamilton? Or is there something else behind it? As we apply the Constitution to the new cases, the practical cases that come before us, we have to learn again how these people did it, and what, how they did it. They give us extraordinary, um, luminous examples of how they did it. Men like Alexander Hamilton, John Marshall, showed a remarkable knack for tracing their judgments back to certain anchoring axioms of knowledge, the things that would have to underlie anything we claim reliably to know. And the surprise is that becomes the source of what we call the natural law. We are learning uh, the idea of law more than just uh, the processes and, and case law. We're understanding what makes good law, what makes bad law, and that all informs how we take the next steps of deciding uh, cases about law, deciding what laws to enact, and at the end of the day, just how to be a good citizen and how to interact with the law.